Let's continue with talking about a couple of basic physical properties that we often measure in order to better understand a sample of matter. So temperature is at this point just a measure of how hot or how cold something is. We'll see later on that temperature actually has a different meaning when we're looking at microscopic objects like atoms and molecules and so on. But right now when we say we measure the temperature of something, we're really talking about how hot or how cold that object is. So a uh, hot day, we would say that's 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius or a very cold day would be something like minus 31 degrees Fahrenheit. Of course, in introductory chemistry or Chem 10, typically you learn formulas that allows you to convert between one scale to another scale. In Chem 11, really what I want you to be able to do is not just memorize formulas, but be able to derive formulas. So one of the main things that you want to be able to do is if I were to give you some type of uh, temperature scale that's not necessarily one of the trees that are shown here, Kelvin, Celsius, or Fahrenheit, which you all know how to convert, then what you need to do is to be able to convert them. So there's a specific set of steps you can do that would allow you to be able to make conversion. If you really think about any two temperature scales, they're really just related to each other by a line equation. They're linearly related. And so you can find that equation that relates one scale scale to the other scale by finding the line equation that matches the two different scales. If you want to find the line equation, assuming you know two different points on that line, first equation you can use is this equation right here, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, where m here represents the slope of the line. And the slope of the line can be calculated by taking the difference in the y values of the two data points divided by the difference in the x values of the two data points. Okay, so let's see how we can put this in practice. If we're trying to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit, and let's say we absolutely don't know anything about a conversion formula for this, how should we do this? Well, we pick two data points. Two data points, the easiest one is the melting and the boiling point of water. So the melting point of water is zero Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit, and the boiling point of water is 100 Celsius or 212 Fahrenheit. So remember, the way you would do this is you would have plot, right? Uh, X and Y in this case. So this is your Y axis. This is your X axis where the X axis corresponds to one temperature. Let's say your degree centigrade and then your Y axis corresponds to another temperature. Let's say that's your degrees Fahrenheit. And then what you'll do is you'll put those two points that you have. So remember X axis is your Celsius. So zero Celsius is 32 Fahrenheit. So you're going to have one data point that is zero comma 32. This is X comma Y. This is your X one Y one. And then you have your x2, y2, which is 100 Celsius corresponds to 112 Fahrenheit. Now, to get your equation, conversion equation, you're going to do something like this. y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So how would I do that? Well, I would do y minus y1 is 32. So y minus 32 equals to m. m is the slope. Well, how do I get the slope? I take the difference in the y value, which is 212 minus 32. So that's what that is. Over the difference in the x value. x2 is 100, x1 is 0. So over 100 minus 0. That's your slope. And then multiply by x minus x1. x minus x1 is 0. Simplifying this equation, this is what I get. y is equal to 180 over 100 x plus 32. Now, what is y? Well, y represents my degrees Fahrenheit. So I can replace that with degrees Fahrenheit equals to, instead of 180 over 100, I can simplify this uh, to the lowest whole number I can, which is 9 over 5 times x. x is my degree Celsius plus 32. So if you remember, this was the equation that you're asked to memorize when you're taking Chem 10 or Introductory Chemistry. And now what we just did is derive that equation. And this approach can be applied to any two temperature scales. It doesn't have to be any one of these three. It could be any new temperature scale that you're given. And in your problem worksheets and so on, you're definitely going to be asked those types of questions. So make sure you're understanding how to approach deriving formula for two temperature scales using this equation of a line method. The other property that we often talked about is density. Density is defined as the ratio of mass to volume.
volume or d is equal to m over v so what is the density actually measuring well density is really measuring how much stuff right which is mass you can pack into a given amount of space which is your volume density is uh, one of the intensive properties that we know it's a property whose value doesn't change with mass so if i have a cup of water for example uh, its density at 20 degrees celsius is going to be 0.9982 grams per milliliter now if i have a swimming pool full of water at 20 degrees the density of all that water in that swimming pool is still going to be 0.9982 grams per milliliter so in other words whether you have a lot of water like in the swimming pool you have very little water in the cup the density doesn't change and that's an intensive property one of the things i want you to develop a feel for is just where density values tend to be so solids are uh, a lot of particles within that same amount of space so you can imagine this circle here is the amount of space you have right so imagine that that's a ball instead and this is like a cross section of that ball so within that space there's a lot of particles so if there's a lot of particles that means that's very dense the liquid form very should be less dense so typically this is what it looks like the solid would look like this the liquid would look like that now here you can see that the label is exactly the opposite and that's you know, sometimes a little confusing to students but this is only true for water so very few substances look like this typical substances the solid would look like this the liquid would look like that so the liquid is less dense than the solid and then the gas is the least dense of all because there's very very few stuff that they're packing into that space okay hopefully that makes sense in terms of uh, why density values are different for the different states of matter now as a result of that difference in density what ends up happening is that you're going to see that your solid density tends to be in units of grams per cubic centimeter and it ranges from numbers between 0.2 to 20 roughly liquid is going to be less dense the unit is still grams over milliliter which is the same unit as grams over cubic centimeter but the values of those is usually smaller in terms of range so this one can go all the way to 20 this one only goes up to about four gas is even lower in density so the units actually different now it goes from grams over milliliter to grams per liter so the size of the space now is a thousand times bigger because that's what a liter is relative to a milliliter but then the amount of stuff you're putting in is about the same as what you would have put in in a liquid okay. now let's finish our discussion on a review of dimensional analysis Dimensional analysis or unit analysis is nothing more than a method that we use in chemistry, physics, and related sciences to try to convert one quantity to another quantity. We've done this quite a bit in Chem 10, so I don't want to repeat a lot of the information here. I'll do a couple of examples to remind you how to do this. But just keep in mind that one of the things you need to do to be able to convert is you need a conversion factor. So a conversion factor is basically an equality between two different quantities that are in different units so for example a hundred centimeters and one meter are the same exact thing or one foot and 12 inches are the same exact thing and so those are our conversion factors we can use that to convert between the two different units centimeter and meter or foot and inches if you happen to have those um, a couple of things to keep in mind the way the general method you do this is the following whatever you're given you're going to start with that and you have to have your target unit so this is the given unit this is the target unit and what you do is you use your conversion factor to take you from your given unit to your target unit the idea is always just like approaching fractions remember in fractions you can cross cancel right if you have a denominator and you have a numerator you can cancel the quantities on the numerator versus the denominator the same thing here if you're one of your units it's in the denominator then you're gonna to have to put a numerator unit here to cancel that out if your unit here is in the numerator you're gonna to have to find a unit here that's in the denominator to cancel that one out a couple of things about conversion factors remember that you can flip conversion factors hundred centimeters equals a meter can be written as hundred centimeter over one meter or one meter over hundred centimeters just depends on which one is more convenient to use for your purpose you can use a series of conversion factors you don't have to just use one if you want to convert 
or inches all the way to millimeter, you might need to use three different conversion factors. That's fine. You can raise conversion factors by certain power, especially when you're starting to calculate those derived properties like areas or volumes, right? Those are just length times length, remember? So you're basically squaring your length units in that case. If you're converting square foot to square meters, for example, you're going to have to find the conversion factor between foot to meter and then square those conversion factors. Keep in mind that if you have units on both numerator and denominator, like miles per hour or something, and you're trying to convert that to meters per second, then you're going to have to change both the units. You have to convert the top unit or the numerator unit, and you also have to convert the denominator unit. Okay.